Hey everybody, Edo here, and this is The Big Book of Madness by Maxime Romberg and Yellow. Now, a uh, somebody from Facebook, I don't remember who recommended this game, said I would love it. And for sure, the art and visual execute and execution is just is just stellar. I mean, yellow is always stellar, but this is like super stellar. It's very cool. The character art is just awesome for all these kids. You're at a, a magic school and you're learning to cast spells and be little wizards like Harry Potter. Um, and you get into some library and you open up the Book of Madness. Like you shouldn't have, but you did. And this is such a cool setup. It's like a book. There's a back. But as you open it, a creature appears, and there's the creature, and what happens, and then what happens after you complete defeating him, and then you turn the page, and the next creature bursts out, and the art is awesome, awesome. Everything about me wanted, and you know, nice components, wanted me to adore, adore, adore this game, um, and I think at best I enjoy it. It's good. It's something I'd play with the right crowd. And the reason is, it's actually, um, how do you say, it, it, it's, it's very mechanical. Like, this is an amazing paint job, a glorious paint job on a game that has very little theme, very, like, like it's, art, it's got the art presentation, but when you're playing, it really is just this, drafting mechanical um cooperative game to stop the the monsters and um it's got a lot of neat mechanics they work and i'll describe them quickly but that you can't help but wish there was more you can't help but wish there was something that tied it together above and beyond a rock solid well balanced tightly balanced mechanical cooperative game um you're going to reveal a monster based on the monster they get harder as you go at least from the beginning uh you, you um, are going to get a certain number of curses. The monster card says what curses and these symbols you're going to have. Um, and you get a preview of what the curses are going to be, but those get laid out in time. And then as they're laid out, players essentially need to clear the curses before they occur. If um, the day or round cycle without you clearing the curses, you lose. And you need to go all the way through and fight the bosses. I actually, this isn't, this is like all of the monsters. There's, you wouldn't use a deck this big, um, but... I just put it down. But yeah, there's tons of variation, lots of neat things. So that's one way to lose. The other way to lose is as you play, you can accrue madness. If you ever have a full hand of madness, you lose. So you sort of are drafting and you can draft in madness and when you cycle your deck and a few other things and based on spells. And then suddenly you got a hand of madness and you can also uh, drop madness. Basically, players start with these characters that are so awesome. They have an initial hand set and you use those set to cast spells. Each player starts with the same four spells, telepathy, combustion, and again, no qualms on the art, growth, and ice. And you have a handful of these little resource cards that have one token um, or multiple tokens up to three. Now, as you're playing, you can basically draft and discard and move your uh, cards around so that you are trying to get rid of lower ones, move them to twos, and move them to threes to have more agency in the game. Um, the other neat thing is so, and casting the spells, like to clear this requires just four of uh, wind or four of fire. So you just, you you want to keep, you know, you have a fixed hand uh, size. So you want to get higher value cards into it and you want to draft. But you're not drafting anything interesting. You're like drafting ones for twos and twos for threes. And I think that might be the problem. You're just trying to upgrade your numbers, right? You don't feel like you're growing. Now the spells also can be purchased and you have, a, you have a set amount you can have at any given time for, so you have to sort of trade out. And that's where the game gets more interesting. Again, can't complain about what's coming through with the characters on, this, on these cards. They're awesome, but um, it just somehow doesn't grab you the way you'd want it to. Again, mechanically sound. Um, the other thing you can do is you can sort of um, put cards up. I forget what it's called. It's probably... Um, I mean, you use, use one of your spells to... Um, essentially reserve your action cards or your, your mana cards or whatever they are for other players to use. So you're sort of, the cooperative element is I'm trying to work it, we're talking, and then I'm perhaps 
putting up resources for other players. I can oh, I can use to, uh, telepathy to have, I think it's telepathy, one of my basic spells uh, for another player to take an action. You can overpay to do lots of things. So look, again, it works, it works, it works. I don't want to discredit it. I enjoy it. It's a little long, it's a little dry, and it is got to be one of my favorite looking games in terms of the art and, and the, the cartoony Harry Potter world. And so hopefully they can continue to leverage that and leverage that thematically and perhaps with some story or some character. Um, right now you just have a really sound drafting, um, clear the spells cooperative game. So subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.